If you like fandom, and if you like to accessorize while showing off your fandom, then you're gonna wanna keep watching, as I'm gonna be decorating my Ita bag and I'll show you what I put in it. Hello lovelies, my name is Mamta and welcome to my channel Geek Glitz, in which I talk about all things geek and all things glitz. I'm a fandom and fashion lover, so I've made a lot of videos on these topics if you want to explore my channel. And if you're new, be prepared for my Harry Potter obsession, which will become quite apparent when you check out some of my other videos. So today I'm going to be talking about Ida bags, and this is an example of an Ida bag. I believe the bag and the term originate from Japan, and I got my bag from a store called Wigo, which is a Japanese store in Hong Kong. So Anita bag is basically a bag with a transparent front in which people display their fandom loves. So they can put in plushies, keychains, enamel pins, stickers, badges, and sometimes they even decorate the outside of the bag with rhinestones, washi tape, phone charms, and bag charms. So the sky's the limit on what you would decorate an Ita bag with and it's just a fun and fashionable way to show your fandom love. There are so many types of Ita bags too. You can get a backpack like I have or there are tote bags and crossbody bags as well. There are several options and they come in so many different colors. Even the transparent part can come in different shapes. So this one's a heart, but there are circles, there are stars, and sometimes they're glittery and sometimes they're not. So there's a huge variety out there. And AliExpress sells them and so does Amazon. So I'll put some links in the description to some bags that I can find online. But if you're interested, you can just search for Ida bags on Google and I'm sure a lot of results will come up. So I got my bag for 239 Hong Kong dollars and I actually wanted it without the wings but they were sold out of that so that's why I ended up with this because I honestly still prefer black bags. The dimensions of this bag are approximately 10 and a half inch width 11 and a half inch height and a three inch depth. And then I also got this crossbody bag in black for a simpler and smaller Ida bag look. And this was for 199 Hong Kong dollars. The dimensions of this bag are approximately an eight inch width, a eight and a half inch height and a half inch depth. So I'm gonna be filling up my Ida bags with some Harry Potter enamel pins and some other fandom pins. And you can watch me as I work. So this is my Ita backpack and before I start decorating it with pins, I'll give you a closer look at the bag itself. So this has a zippered pull which you can open up and on the inside it's quite spacious and deep so you can fit in a lot of things. There's also two back pockets over here in which you can slip some smaller items like a phone or maybe a thin wallet or a card holder. And now let's talk about this front area. So it's transparent on the front as mentioned and this has a slip through here. So what you would do is you'd put in plushies, keychains or your pins down through here and you could pin it through the satin cloth and pin it from the back and then that pin would be able to be displayed from the top. But I'm actually not gonna pin the pins directly through the satin. I'm gonna be using a cardboard. This is some printed cardboard, and I'm basically gonna lay out my pins, stick them through here, and pin it from the back, and then slip this in through the front. Now, I measured out this cardboard by basically trial and error using a ruler and scissors, and just made sure that it fits through here. And I can test it out and show it to you so that you can see what it looks like when I slip it in. So as you can see, the printed cardboard looks pretty good. And the benefits of using this cardboard method are twofold. One, you wouldn't put holes in your satin over here because the pins would be going through the cardboard and not through your satin. So you wouldn't have holes in your bags. And the second thing is technically I could have multiple boards with different layouts of pins and I can just keep switching them out and go for a different look each time. And I thought that would be really convenient. So you don't have to only use a printed cardboard. You can actually go for many things if you decide to use this method. You can cover up a piece of stiff board or styrofoam with some fabric, like a printed fabric, and then you can stick your prints through that. I also cut out a piece of heart using two A4 sheets of paper and measured it out so I get the approximate area of this transparent area. 
Now, the reason I did this is because I thought it would help me plan out better where to place the different pins when I'm putting it on the board. It's just a frame of reference for myself. So now I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'm going to stick some pins through this cardboard and then we can test out how it looks once I put it in here. So I've got a whole bunch of pins now laid out and the rubber backs as well. And I'm just going to try and figure out some kind of design layout that I can go for that would work. So I'm going to put this here and try to lay out a couple of options. I'm going to start off with these first to see how they turn out. So now that I've got a basic pin design, let me just measure it out. Seems to cover that up. So I think it looks okay. I'm just gonna test out this design in this bag. So I've got the bag here. I'm gonna carefully slip this through. So as you can see, I didn't end up going with a lot of pins in the end. I went with a couple of them because I didn't want to overwhelm the backpack. I kind of like the spaced out look of the different pins. So I went with the Hogwarts pin, the Sorting Hat pin, a Harry McGonagall, a little Hufflepuff pin, Ravenclaw because I'm a Ravenclaw, Sorting Hat, um, this Eagle with the Ravenclaw scarf, a little Hedwig pin, Hogwarts Express, and a little Quaffle. So this is what I ended up with in the end. So next I've got this other Ita bag, which is the crossbody, and this one is also in black. First, let me show you this bag. It's zippered from the top. You can open it up. And the front has the same slip-in area, but this time there's like a Velcro, so you can keep it closed or open, and it actually holds it together better. I kind of like that. I wish they had that in the backpack as well. And then on the back, there is a little slip-in pocket which has a button so you can slip in some things in here as well. So as you can see, I've laid out a couple more pins here. They are non-Harry Potter ones and I've still got some remaining Harry Potter ones. And this time I'm not gonna use the cardboard. I'm just gonna directly put the pins in and slip it through the bag. And I will probably end up using fewer pins. It's a smaller area. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So this is the final result. I decided to go with a lot more simpler look for this bag and it's got multiple fandoms. So there's a Disney pin, a Harry Potter pin, a Simpsons pin and a Marvel pin. And I think it's a nice way to show my love for multiple fandoms. So when comparing the two methods I used to fill up the Ita bags, I think the cardboard method was a lot easier than simply putting in the pins through and pinning it. Because with the cardboard, at least I was able to lay it all out first and figure out my design and then put the pin easily through the cardboard and put a pin rubber on the back of that and then slip the cardboard in. So it was a lot easier. As opposed to this, when I was putting in the pins, it was a little hard to figure out the positioning and then to reach in the bag and struggle a bit to put the pin back onto the pin to make sure it stays in place. So honestly, I prefer the cardboard method and I think it's a lot easier too. So there you have it. There's so much that you could do with Ida bags and you can get a lot of ideas by looking through Instagram or even Google images 
for Ida bags. Also, if you order a bag online, make sure to check out the product size so you know what size bag you are getting. Because a lot of resellers on AliExpress and Amazon seem to be using the same generic stock photos, so it's probably a good idea to contact the seller in advance and ask for more product photos before placing your order. So anyway, I hope you thought this was interesting. I think Ida bags are a really fun way to show my fandom love, and I think they would look great at a fan convention or an amusement park or even for general everyday use, which is probably what I will use it for. So comment below and let me know what are your thoughts on Ida bags. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And please subscribe to my channel Geek Glitz for more things geek and more things glitz as I make videos every Tuesday and Friday. And feel free to connect with me on my other socials, which are all listed below in the description. I post daily pictures on Instagram, so come check it out and feel free to DM me. Thank you for watching lovelies, see you in the next video, bye!